we started Toast uh, around uh, four years ago now. Um, it was a friend of mine's uh, idea, a guy called Tristram Stewart. Uh, Tristram is a food waste activist, environmentalist, campaigner. Um, he's arguably done more than anyone to raise awareness about the issues of uh, food waste. Um, and yeah, he and I were having a conversation um, where he really pointed out the fact that um, bread is the biggest food waste in the world. So 44% of the bread that's baked in the UK um, is never consumed. 44%, absolutely bonkers. Um, but he'd also had this uh, delicious insight uh, recently. Um, this was four years ago, uh, recently, uh, that um, the beer was actually brewed uh, with surplus bread for millennia. Uh, the first ever beer that was uh, brewed, the first recipe that we've discovered um, from thousands of years ago uh, had bread uh, as an ingredient. Um, and we would have local bakeries and local breweries partnering up from that point onwards uh, to use this kind of surplus um, grain uh, in the form of bread uh, to ferment into uh, delicious beer. Uh, so when he said, Rob, let's start up a beer company, uh, let's get wasted on waste. Um, let's launch a, a company that's going to uh, save the world with beer. Uh, I said, absolutely. Um, you have me at beer. Let's definitely uh, crack on and do that. And so we started as a, a kind of a small scale project. Um, there's been uh, sort of four or five of us involved uh, since the, the very beginning. Um, and it quite quickly grew from being a small kind of pet project um, into a really big um, yeah, idea and at times feels like a proper business. Um, and so uh, it's been a, a whirlwind four years. Um, we have um, now brewed um, like two million slices of bread uh, that would have otherwise gone to waste. Um, We've open sourced our recipe that's been downloaded um, like over 50,000 times um, all around the world. We've had breweries all over the world replicate and copy the idea. Um, and we've raised uh, tens of thousands of pounds for uh, charities. Uh, and so um, it's, yeah, it's been a fantastic uh, experience. Um, really built the business on four uh, core founding principles um, so first and foremost it's a delicious beer obviously I'm a little bit biased as chief toaster um, but it's a delicious beer um, it's got to just stack up as a, as a really tasty brew uh, so we brew a lager uh, an IPA uh, an APA an American pale ale uh, and, and a regular English pale ale um, and we do various seasonal beers, so wheat beers or porters or stouts, um, quite often as collaborations with other breweries as well. Um, but we've got four beers in our core range that I shamelessly have uh, above my shoulder. Um, and, um, and they've just got to stack up as good beers. You walk into a bar, a pub, um, a supermarket to buy a beer. It's great to have a story behind that product um i think and, and know that 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 product is doing good uh, but it's still got to serve its its, its its core purpose um and so we've won great taste awards for all our beers and we have been lucky enough to win gold medals in international beer competitions uh, so it just stacks up uh, regardless of uh, the, the the for good impact uh, narrative um but the second third and fourth principles behind the business are all much more impact driven um so yeah, we don't want to rest until we have eliminated commercial bread waste um, and seen it transformed into beer throughout the entire industry, which is why we open sourced our recipe. It's why we've worked with breweries all over the world. Um, and we see the whole beer industry as, a, as an avenue to change um, this current waste stream uh, into a upcycled product. Um, third thing about the business is uh, trying to raise awareness but in a fun accessible way about the issue of waste and food waste um, 
it's uh, food waste isn't necessarily the kind of sexiest uh, topic um, and we want to raise awareness about it. Um, it is the number one contributor towards um, environmental uh, damage and climate change. Um, so the food industry as a whole has by far the biggest impact uh, on the planet. Um, people will think of the transportation industry or the energy industry in isolation, um, but it's the food industry, the entire food system uh, that has the biggest impact. Um, we are, I'm sure, as everyone knows, chopping down rainforests, um, farming land. Um, we're then shipping, trucking, flying food all over the planet. Um, we are using vast amounts of energy in the processing and the refrigeration or the cooking of our food. Um, but one third of that food goes to waste um, at the moment. So it's over a billion tons of food in the world every year just go to waste. Uh, and so we hope with um, bread and beer, uh, we can create this circular solution and create a, a story and help, I guess, showcase what is possible um, so that the entire industry and, and people's behavior can, can hopefully um, shift and change. Uh, and then the fourth thing is, is donating uh, our, our profits to charity. Um, and that's, uh, we made a commitment that it would either be 1% of our revenue or 100% of our profits, um, whichever one is the bigger uh, at any given time. Uh, at the moment, sadly, 1% of our revenue is, is higher than uh, all of our profits. Um, we're still in our growth uh, stage. Um, but it means that we've donated um, 35, 40,000 pounds to, to charity uh, so far. Um, and so, um, yeah, really proud, I guess, of those principles. Uh, but th that last principle, I guess, was something I was going to uh, talk a little bit about um, today. The current COVID crisis uh, has had uh, a pretty major impact on our business. Um, obviously, in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's having far more impact on many others. Um, which is yeah, far more serious than, than the impact that it's having on our, our business. Um, but it has had a, a very serious impact on our business. About 70% of our business is in bars and pubs and restaurants, uh, which have obviously all closed. Um, we stopped selling beer to bars and pubs and restaurants really from the beginning of March. Um, that side of our business just uh, really sort of cut off overnight. And then the retail industry was pretty badly hit as well for a while so we sell our beer in waitrose tesco's co-op ocado and as we will all remember um there were a lot of empty shelves uh, on the supermarkets uh, and you couldn't book a slot at ocado um for love nor money uh, and um uh, we were yeah pretty badly impacted there as well because for very understandable and correct reasons, uh, the big retailers were also having to shore up their supply chain and focus on uh, the really important fresh produce uh, and craft beer was at the back of the queue, uh, very rightly so. But it just meant that our business was absolutely hammered. We should have come to James for uh, some advice, actually. I wish I'd uh, uh, picked up the phone a couple of months ago. We tried to transform our business uh, to be more e-commerce um, uh, focused overnight so rebuilt our sort of our website um, we tried to focus far more on how on earth we're going to get our product to customers uh, but we also wanted to combine this with a an impact um, uh, narrative and create uh, meaningful change we were very aware that our main charity partner feedback uh, are reliant upon our support and our sales just cutting off uh, from march uh, doesn't just um, impact us, our business, uh, our team. Uh, it impacts uh, feedback, the, the charity that we're supporting. Um, and ordinarily, feedback are focused on longer-term systemic change um, than necessarily the immediate short-term needs. But it became very apparent in March that there were very real short-term needs. Um, so they were looking to start up various feeding programs in some of the communities that they work in in the UK where they could create kind of meals on wheels type setups where they could produce food, get it into uh, people's homes, get it to local communities where people were used to coming to community centres for their food. Um, they were no longer allowed to gather uh, and there was a very urgent and immediate food crisis um, that was created. But Feedback didn't have the, the funding to 
uh, to do that with any degree of confidence, especially knowing that our business had been somewhat uh, uh, hit. Uh, and so we launched this kind of meal deal program uh, through our website. Uh, and we committed that every beer that we then sold online, we would fund a meal uh, for those in need via feedback. Uh, and so um, since we launched that initiative, we've now uh, provided, um, I think it's between 35 and 40,000 uh, meals to those in need. And yeah, we're extremely proud of our ability to do that to have mobilized that kind of support um, it's felt very appropriate and true to who we are what we are we're a certified b corporation as well so just every business decision we make uh, considers um, these kind of um, things regardless of the current crisis we're, we're always considering uh, how uh, everything we can do can create maximum impact uh, and it uh, feels and, and felt very appropriate that this is where we could actually deliver a, a very urgent solution uh, at that stage uh, what's interesting now is that I guess we're, we're starting to think longer term again. Um, there are still um, very pressing uh, needs around the country, but thankfully there are some bigger organisations out there now mobilised to provide that support. Fantastic organisations like Fair Share, uh, City Harvest and others uh, that are now feeding communities uh, all over the country. Some of the big corporates have stepped in and are now thankfully providing support. So we were kind of a first mover. Uh, but I wonder if um, there are now bigger players uh, at play uh, providing that support that we're wondering whether uh, now or, or when might be the right time to pivot back to thinking longer term. Now, obviously, all our profits go to charity anyway, uh, but we're normally thinking longer term, systemic change, uh, retail behaviour, consumer behaviour, government laws, policies that need to be changed in order to fix the entire system. Uh, and so we're at a funny stage of trying to rethink whether they're whether we should be um, transitioning um, or whether we stick with this this kind of program uh, for the the foreseeable future yeah i guess that that's kind of um us in a uh, a bit of a nutshell and who we are where we've come from uh what we've done now in the the current uh, situation and yeah would love to take any questions that anyone's got uh, about any of that or about any other aspect of the business great stuff thanks Rob, there are, there's a couple of questions in the, in, the, in the question box here, but what I, what I wanted to ask you first, if that's all right, I love the four, sort of founding the business on four, those four principles. Um, what, what I found really interesting was that the second one, that you won't rest until you've eliminated that commercial bread waste. Yep. But by doing that, you've open sourced your recipe, which is like your IP. So the decision to do that, how did that come about? You know, what was the conversation around that? This will probably sound too self-absorbed maybe, but we, we really don't believe our kind of USP, our unique selling point, our kind of our special source as a business is the fact that we brew our beer using surplus bread. Um, we brew really good beer. Um, we have a great brand. We have a great narrative. We have great impact. We have great people. Um, we are just a great product um, and everything that you need to create a great story and message and brand and product and business. Um, we happen to brew our beer uh, in a way that fights waste. Um, but I think our business and our brand is all the stronger for wanting to change the entire system rather than people seeing us as a one-off. I think that we would actually be and I think we are even better received the fact that we're actively encouraging others to follow suit. And so there's now, I mean, way over 50, I think probably over a hundred uh, beers now all around the world brewing with surplus bread in the UK alone, there are about a dozen. Um, and that's fantastic. That's really important. The only way we're actually going to create impact is if others follow suit. We are scratching the surface of this issue if we do it alone. Uh, whereas if we can encourage everyone else to follow suit, then we'll make meaningful change. Um, and so we yeah, want others to follow suit. And it's also not rocket science. Um, you know, we would be, uh, you know, we're not so arrogant as to think that brewing is the most challenging uh, kind of um, I guess it is certainly not, it's not the rocket science. And, and we, we know that other brewers would figure it out anyway. You're, you're using, uh, the wheat um, or uh, 
whatever the ingredient, uh, the rye maybe in the bread, uh, whatever the, the grain in the bread is, you're just using that, you're fermenting that, uh, it's a surplus ingredient, uh, you're replacing the malted barley. So we replace about one third of the malted barley with surplus bread. Um, we've gone as high as 50%, it then starts to taste a little bit funky. Um, and you can go as, as low as kind of 1%, 2%, 3%. Um, but clearly if someone like Heineken uh, were to make the shift uh, and replace 1% of their barley with surplus bread, it would have way more impact than toast using 30%. And so we would much rather see the entire industry change, maybe gradually. Um, and I don't think that will work us out of business. I think that will actually put the toast brand higher up people's uh, radars um, when the press release comes out one day that Heineken have decided to brew all of their beer with bread. I suspect toast will be referenced as the ones that yeah. started the, the whole thing. Uh, and we may well see a, a flurry of, of interest um, and therefore sell more beer, support our charity partners uh, even more. Yeah, I think that's a great, a great way to approach it. And I think, um, you know, like I say, some of the things you've been doing are absolutely fantastic. You know, you've got to be really proud of 35 to 40,000 meals um, over quite a fairly short period of time, really, then. Yes. Yeah. Just two months. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it's amazing. It's been a, yeah. A, a, a quick uh, whirlwind experience. But like I said, it's, it's a funny one that we're now sort of at a phase of thinking, is it the right thing to do? um on an ongoing basis but we're also very aware and welcome people's thoughts and comments really because it's i guess it's it's comfortable enough in this sort of environment to probably justify and explain it that we might then shift to thinking longer term but i'm equally concerned and aware that many consumers that don't get to hear a sort of 10 minute dialogue as to that thought process might then think of toast as jumping on a bandwagon for a couple of months and then going back to kind of what we used to do and was it opportunistic and if they don't fully understand that we're a brand that donates all our profits to charity or that this is kind of just true to our DNA, is there actually a risk that we, it kind of creates some negative stigma if we then leave this kind of initiative that we're, that we're doing? But again, probably just overthinking it, but we're a, we're a very um, deep thinking uh, team uh, that, that constantly kind of challenge ourselves and um, yeah, try to sort of think what is the best thing to do yeah well that that's super important right so you know as consumers now we don't just buy brands we join brands and everything you do has to be authentic because it's too easy for us to go and find out if what you're saying is is not true so i think that's a good good approach really deep thinking on every decision you make but you have these four principles that every decision is made on and especially being part of b corp as well yeah. um can i go through these couple of questions we have in the in, yes. in the question q a here yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. so we have what are your thoughts around packaging responsibility uh packaging responsibility business like yours uh, should have or sh you should have for advocating the reuse recycle of cans bottles i.e in germany they have a deposit return scheme for past 30 years which is yep. something the uk government is looking into yep uh, so uh massive 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 fans and backers and believers of all kind of packaging reuse um so we've been part of all the consultations that the government have put in place um, over the last several years about introducing a deposit scheme. Um, we are strong advocates for it. I suspect we're a long way off that becoming a reality, sadly. Um, we've been part of a scheme at Waitrose where uh, our beer is served on tap in Waitrose uh, stores, a select number of Waitrose stores where you fill uh, a kind of a takeaway bottle uh, that you then bring back uh, to be cleaned and you get another bottle uh, to, to take away. Um, and uh, that's part of a, a scheme they call uh, Unpacked. Um, and that's been very successful and consumer demand is, is, is growing for that kind of initiative. And uh, we would love for all of our products um, to be served in that way. At the moment, it's just not practical uh, for us to do it the size of our business uh, the cost implications are so considerable. We would need bigger players really to come on board um, to invest in the kind of bottle reuse cleaning systems that are necessary. Um, but yeah, and then we're also in launching an initiative uh, in the next couple of weeks actually to get um, it's called growlers. Uh, so you get kind of a uh, four pints in a in a big bottle, um, a big reusable bottle uh, serviced all over London to start with. They'll be delivered by pedal bike to anyone that wants fresh beer 
uh, served kind of from the tap. Um, and so within a couple of hours of it being poured, it will then be delivered to your home um, and you can then return that the next time you need a delivery. And we basically become a bit of a milkman for uh, fresh beer uh, across London. And so that's something that we'll be launching in the next couple of weeks. And that's what I guess this current crisis has forced businesses like ours to do. It's forced us to innovate on things. Like we've wanted to do that for four years and have never pulled our finger out and just done it because there's always been another reason why it might not be sensible it might not be strategic is it the right time it's going to be a lot of work i guess the current crisis has just forced us to become an e-commerce platform it's forced us to um have something as tangible as the meal deal um that has really resonated and makes us feel so proud to create direct impact has forced us to launch this growler scheme um it's yeah it's very exciting to to see those yeah possibilities so yeah 100 percent behind a reuse scheme and would love to see it uh, broader yeah i think um i think forced is maybe i think it's more accelerated rob because obviously you had the ideas but this this crisis had mean the ideas get accelerated into uh getting these things out into the public but i think consumer definitely we're shifting that way you know cleaning products now are providing you one plastic bottle then sending out the refills on a subscription basis so um yeah subscription for a beer bike turning up at my house i'm i'm all up for yeah um so <laughs> so another question from uh, lucia she says thanks rob um from a fellow sustainability warrior and impact researcher this is so inspiring i was wondering what do you use brewing yeast for is there any further circularity there i conferring it back to bakeries to make bread yeah that's a um that is a very neat idea obviously the uh, I don't know whether you'll be, you'll probably will be uh, aware, uh, having asked that question, that, you know, a company like Marmite, um, that, is, that is exactly what Marmite comes from, is, uh, is the yeast extract from the beer industry. Um, and so there are, I'm a big Marmite lover rather than a hater. Um, and so there are fantastic products out there um, that are part of the circularity that's possible within the beer industry. Um, and we would love to do more with Marmite actually in that respect. Um, to see if there's something possible um, there. Um, all of our spent grains, so um, creating a beer is a bit like creating a very wet porridge, for want of a better phrase. <laughs> so you put your barley and your bread in, in our instance, um, and a lot of water, far more water than you would a porridge, um, and you basically soak uh, the barley like you would soak the kind of porridge oats and the longer you let a porridge stew the kind of sweeter it gets and you bring out the really delicious uh, sugars from the oats in our instance um yeah you're bringing out the sugars from the barley um but ultimately when you want to convert that into beer you drain out that sugary liquid move it over to another vessel and you're left with the sludge um the spent grain that's had all the sugars taken out of it still actually has some uh, really good proteins uh, and nutritional value in it. Uh, people will be blown away to know that beer might not be the most nutritious uh, product uh, in the market. So a lot of the, a lot of the nutritional uh, value is still in the, the spent grain. Um, we've done various things with that um, where it's gone to, uh, you know, it routinely goes to animal feed, uh, but we've also uh, turned that back into bread. So you've kind of used bread to create beer then it's dried at the end of the brew, processed back into a flour to create more bread. Um, and then we've called that the circle of loaf, which obviously is a good fun kind of a thing where you can kind of create bread from beer and bread and then it just is an infinite circle. Um, so there's all sorts of things that can be done. That's great. I mean, a circle of loaf, wasted on waste. Uh, you're <laughs> definitely full of, full of these uh, at toast. Um, good stuff. I think, I think, I think there's, um, oh, there was a question about um, if all your profits go to charity, how do you make a living? Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's a good question. So, uh, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's a simple one and, and uh, it's sort of, uh, but it's an understandable question to, to ask. Um, obviously your profit, so pay ourselves a wage and pay our team. Um, and then it's the, ultimately it's called like your distributable profits. So it's the, Profits after any money has been needed to invest back into the business or after your team have been paid, you're then left with your profits. Normally those profits would go to myself and the directors, um, the co-owners or the shareholders of a business. 
um, either in the form of dividends, so if they're shareholders, they get their dividend, they get their share of the profit, um, or uh, it goes to directors as a kind of profit share uh, or incentive. Um, now, after salaries and reinvestment back into the business, rather than having dividends or, or profit share, we commit all of that money to, to charity. So that's the difference. It doesn't then mean that we then have really inflated salaries in case there's a cynic out there uh, who would then think, well, surely you just pay yourself a crazy amount of money. We don't, uh, sadly. Um, and so um, we, we created a, a kind of a cap as well in our business. So as a B Corp, um, a lot of what we do uh, is trying to push the boundaries of um, really fair practice and transparency within business. Um, and so we have a salary cap between the lowest paid member of the team uh, and uh, myself as the highest paid member of the team uh, to make sure that that ratio never reaches a, a proportion uh, like a FTSE 100 company that has these ridiculous kind of pay scale ratios. Um, and it also then stops any creep towards big inflated salaries and then profits becoming very small. Uh, we want to make sure our profits become as much as possible so that we can uh, really resource the amazing charitable work that's out there. That is a great note to end on, Rob. Um, thank you very much for today. Thank you very much for this morning, mate. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Um, can I shamelessly suggest that people go to toastale.com to uh, yeah. go and uh, support the meal deal? That would be wonderful. And if you're this way inclined, spread the word on social media uh, because we need all the help we can get. Yes, everyone do that. We're going to put this recording up on uh, Giant Peach's website as well. So link to it, share it. And yeah, get people to buy some toast ale. Good stuff. Nice one. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Cheers, everyone, James. for speak attending. Soon. And um, we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.